Oh, welcome back to Thursday Night Football Preview. We've got the Duval Jacksonville Jaguars headed to NOLA, headed to Bourbon Street. Are these teams going to be drunk because the over-under is at 39 and a half? It's insane. We've got Jacksonville getting a point and a half. New Orleans, a very, very, very slight favorite, minus 120 on the money line. Is there something you'd like to share with the class? This look good. Oh, you look good. I like what you did. You guys look great. Good. Looking at this couch, holy shit. I'm going to frame it. It's going to be a movie. <laughs> I'm going to frame it send it to my mother. In this video, we're going to preview everything about Thursday Night Football, the key injuries, the key storylines for the game. We're going to make our picks, who we think is going to win, our favorite underdog squares, as always. And they've got the Derek Carr .5 yard line up there. They've got the free square to incentivize your lazy ass to get on the platform. If you haven't got on yet, I, I mean, I, at this point, it's not a laziness thing. you got something wrong with you. So get on and fix yourself. Derek Carr, .5, total yards, free square, Use promo code BDGE. They'll double your deposit. The key injuries in this game. Jacksonville, we've got Trevor Lawrence dealing with a little bit of a knee injury. I don't know. The vibes seem okay. He might yeah. be a little less mobile, but I, I think he's going to go. Everything's like optimistic outlook, likely to play. Like I think it's very 50-50 right now. I wouldn't really? be surprised if he gets ruled out at all. Why? I, it's just a short week. You know, like it, it's tough to play on Thursday even when you're not hurt. Have and you then seen you anything that that's pointing to that, though? Well, they... Brought someone up from the practice they squad. Did do that. I forget what his name is. Rourke, something Rourke. Nathan Rourke. Nathan, Nathan Rourke. You shitting me? Nathan Rourke gonna play this game? Mm. C.J. Beathard gonna start? Nathan Rourke gonna come in relief? Okay. Well, I think listen. We got a hint of Deshaun Watson vibes. We're filming this Wednesday at four fifteen p.m. Maybe he's ruled out. Maybe he's not. If I had to roll the dice and guess, I, I think he plays through this. I think T. Law. He is the law. He'll be on the field. Zay Jones will not be on the field. Tyson Campbell, one of their better cornerbacks, pulled a little bit of a hammy. He's going to be uh, He's going to be out. He's been playing very well for them. Uh, Brandon Scherf, I believe, is also day-to-day. He could be out of this one as well. He's a little banged up. He's a little They're banged up. doing well. When we move They're over struggling. to the New Orleans Saints, I've got a pretty long list of, of injuries. Derek Carr looks like he's pretty much healed from the shoulder injury. Juwan Johnson's been dealing with a calf basically all year. He's going to be out. Now they have both of their starting tackles. Ryan Ramchek, James Hurst uh, did not practice on Monday or Tuesday. I'm assuming they're going to be out because they play on Thursday, obviously. Now, I was looking back at last week's game, you know, and Seattle had both of their tackles hurt one game. They missed the next game. And I think that was like a big, uh, you know, talking point for a lot of people coming in. Oh, they're missing their entire line. I think they, that was a game they ended up beating Detroit. No, I think that was the Panther game. Because mm. I remember betting on the Panthers thinking, damn, mm. Seattle's missing both their tackles. Whatever it was, it like they ended up winning. Yeah, they ended yeah. up winning the next game. I'm looking at this game now, and I looked. They didn't have these tackles last game either, and they played horrendously. Their pass blocking grade and their run blocking grade were so bad relative to the week prior. I would say that the Saints O-line hasn't been good at all this year. I don't know when Ramchek and Hurst have been in, but when they have been, yeah, they, they have been, been pretty either. They're not the same players, or Ramchek, I guess. Derek Carr doesn't playing. track sacks, whichever team he plays for. Enough. Just like a magnet. All right, so <laughs> we've got the line clearly on the downgrade, and Jacksonville's moving up a little bit. They're like starting to see some of that that investment they put into the pass rush come to fruition a little bit. So we need some weapons in the New Orleans Saints. Could be getting Jamal Williams back. They've been feeding Kamara. Like, it's fucking Thanksgiving dinner. Jamal's played in practice, limited, Monday, Tuesday. He could play in this game. It, it seems like he's he's trending in the right direction. Saints will also be without DeMario Davis, their linebacker. He's probably been their best run defender up to this point. Saints have been a great a great run defense, right? So it's like, it's kind of tricky because you got the Jags who are hot. you got the Saints who have a good defense, but their offense is kind of sputtered left and right. They've been, you know... Derek Carr led the entire league in passing yards last week. Just a Very gutsy, tremendous sure. performance by him. Mm. You just go out there and you say, hey, Derek Carr. hey, Josh Allen, you're playing. Patrick Mahomes, you're playing. Jalen Hurts, you're playing. Don't care. I'm going to have more passing yards than you this week because that's who I am. I'm Derek Carr. All those empty calories, all those empty passing <laughs> yards just to lose to the Houston Texans. All right, Jacksonville. This is an interesting little nugget I took from an article today. They are playing their third football game in a matter of 12 days in three different cities. That is concerning for the Jags. That's extremely concerning. And I have a feeling that's probably playing into the money line. Because I think a lot of people probably look at the money line, right? And, you know, Trevor Lawrence not really knowing whether or not he's playing probably factors into that spread a little bit. But that's that's a big underlying story there. The fact that they're traveling so much and traveling all over the fucking place right now, playing against New Orleans at home. Ken Jackie, 
Can Jacksonville stay hot? I don't know. I, I wanted to stay optimistic, but with the money already being on New Orleans, I don't feel good about Jacksonville in this one. This feels like a game we'll watch them lose and we're just going to chalk it up. Oh, Trevor Lawrence wasn't hurt. Like, I could already feel the storyline and narrative being made before the game happens. This does feel like when the drop-off comes, but it also kind of interesting because you would have assumed that they hit that brick wall before and they kind of, you know, they push past the fact that they were coming back from London. They push past the fact that they were playing the Bills, a very good team, and they've just found ways to win. So I do kind of see a drop-off coming for Jacksonville, but I've been wrong the last two weeks when I was like, oh, this could be a drop-off situation for Jacksonville. I can see him like maybe starting off really slow in the game, but that's kind of the story of every Thursday night football feels like. But the Saints are not a fast team, so it's like you could start off slow and still hang in that game. And I guess they, I mean, they expect it to be a very low scoring game, 39 and a half. They expect it to be very close. So like realistically, based on those numbers, they're expecting what a 20 to 19 game, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty much. That's, that's pretty gross. You don't have to get off to a real hot start. Uh, their defense has been fantastic lately, right? We've already talked about New Orleans down with a lot of their offensive linemen. Uh, they're ranked 25th in pass blocking to begin the year regardless. Josh Allen, five years into his career, and he's just starting to heat up. The man was just simmering. Highest PFF grade of his career up to this point. Five years in, seven sacks up to this point. Third most. Third? Tied for third. Oh, I thought he was five. Tied for five. I thought you were going to say 497th least. Mm, that's where I was going, <laughs> and then he so rudely interrupted me with incorrect statistics. No, we are You're man wrong. of stashes, not statistics. Got a fact check. How much are we betting a purple game? Third most. Tied. Technically the fifth most also. <laughs> Anywhere between third and fifth most. <laughs> Anywhere between the 400 and 500 least. Okay, Josh Allen, seven sacks, tied top three in the NFL. The guy's getting after the quarterback, all right? Um, and that might be the name of the game there. It's like whose defense plays better. We have New Orleans, who's been playing well. We've got Jacksonville, who's been playing well. Do we see a breakthrough performance from either of these offenses, I guess is the question. Breakthrough? Are Probably. either of these offenses better than the opposing defense? I would say both defenses have been impressive. Maybe a peak Jags, but I don't think. But... Tomorrow, I'm also Jax. concerned that the Saints haven't really played that tough of competition on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, they played the Houston Texans last week, which might have been the best offense that they faced all year, which means Jacksonville, assuming that Trevor Lawrence is going to play, is now the best offense that they are going to have to face. Meanwhile, Jax, Jack's defense did a pretty good job against Buffalo and a pretty good job against Kansas City. They've been tested True. before, and they've showed up. So I'm not saying that the Jax defense is better, but I think at the very least these are similar – defenses in terms of uh, talent level. We got to say that the Jacksonville's offense is better. I mean, Saints, one of the worst offenses in the league. I, I would definitely agree they're better. I just don't know. I, I would say the Saints defense might be better than the Jags offense today. I think that's what the that's what makes for an under game. Yeah, when both sure. of the defenses are probably better than both of the offenses. I would say it, maybe it's a toss up between Jacksonville and New Orleans. Just kind of just depends what happens Jags on that day. Get. Yeah. But again, like a lot of traveling, a lot of banged up players right now. You don't have time to prepare. Like, when you're moving that much in between games, you don't have a lot of time to sit down, look at film, think about how you're going to attack the defense kind of thing. So that that does worry me a little bit. But on the New Orleans side, Kamara has kind of been the storyline of the offense since he's returned from suspension. Cooking. So in a way, yes, the touch counts are crazy. So I was looking at it, 24 touches first game back, 25 the next, 26 the one after that. 27 incoming? Price of the brick. So, <laughs> price of the bricks went up. <laughs> Averaging 19.2 PPR fantasy points per game because he's catching a ridiculous amount of That's balls. Insane. One touchdown. Jamal Williams might be back again, like I said. 3.8 yards per touch. That's really fucking bad. That's not yards per carry. That's yards per touch. For Kamara. The amount of receptions that he's getting should elevate that number, not decrease your yards per carry number. So, their offense is like jamming themselves into Kamara. But they're just, it's like trying to open a push door when it's a pull. You know, it's yeah. like that scene from, uh, what's the, uh, Tim Anchorman? Robbins? No, no, no. Um, 55 Burger, 55, whatever. Oh, I think you should leave. I think you should leave. You know what I'm talking about, that scene? They're in a restaurant and he tries, he like has a job interview. He tries to leave and it's a push door or it's a pull door and he just continues to push it so he doesn't look like I an idiot. I missed that skit. Damn, you're an idiot. 55 Burger, 55 Fries, 55 Burger. <laughs> Either way, that's out. That's that's the Saints' offense right now with Alvin Kamara. It kind of feels like it's nice to see him back. And as someone who has him uh, in an important league, I feel okay about him. Yeah, the official. If I'm ever going to say regression on a player, it kind of feels like it's coming for him. Like, how many times can you continue to just do the same thing and it not be good for you? So you're saying positive regression, as in like still catching all these balls, but yards per touch go up. 
You think no, you th- or you're saying his receptions go I'm down? I'm saying like he doesn't you look think good. His efficiency stays the same, but the volume decreases. I just think eventually you have to look at your team as the Saints and say like, okay, let's not give Kamara 25 touches a game because it's he's not doing anything for us. But I also think that's the style that Derek Carr plays. I think yeah. Derek Carr, in retrospect, maybe we should have seen this coming. You have a receiving back like Alvin Kamara. Derek Carr likes to dump it off into the flats and behind the line. Well, that was, I, I feel like I, I was kind of thinking about that most of the summer. It was why I liked Kamara where he was getting picked, but I also kind of assumed that he would be better than Fair. what he's doing right now on the ground. Like, there's no big plays. He's mm-hmm. not scoring the ball at all. But if you're going to catch 10 passes, like, you're going to be fine in half right. yard and half yard full PPR. That's the thing. I think his, it's, it's just an unreliable thing, I feel like, to bank on continuing to happen. His usage is definitely going to go down on the ground. Sure. But I, I don't think... But he's also... Yeah, he's averaging like three yards per carry, so I'm not like too worried about that, I guess, but... Yeah. You guys are more... I feel more optimistic about him. I'm pretty tomorrow. high on him. I, I don't know if the volume's actually going to leave. I just think that this is what the offense is. Um, like, he's even a guy I think I would target in fantasy. A little bit. I guess. He's he's and maybe like, the Jamal coming back. We'll, we'll just have to see. We'll have to let that play out, but... I don't even think that'll really affect him. It, it's just more so... I don't know. If you're not in a full PPR, if you're not in full PPR, I feel like there's a stretch of games coming where he scores you like six, seven, eight fantasy points in a row. I don't know. There's something, there's something that feels off to me. Fair. But that, I mean, yeah, I mean, if this, you're in like a standard stinks. league, yeah, this is, you're spot on. But I, I don't know. I, I guess I just forget our audience even plays in standard sometimes. No, I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about standard. No one plays in standard leagues, but like half PPR. It's not, it's not great. Still hasn't had a game below like 14 points. And half PPR? Definitely has. Cap. What are we betting? What are we betting, boys? It might be like 13.7 nope, is his lowest. So that would be below 14. Yeah. yeah. Nah, you're oh, 13.9 is the lowest. Okay. So Count it. I'm going to Now, dub. I'm 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 rewarding <laughs> dub with roasted. That win. We need one more. One more battle on this. But his yardage, I don't know, dude. Like maybe this whole segment is fucking cooked and this is just dumb, but I don't know. I just I, I look at the numbers. It's the yards per carry are terrible. The yards per reception are awful. Like there's no way it's a positive to continue to give him the ball. And I just tend to but think... But you can over- say the same thing about, like, Derrick Henry. Like, he was never the most efficient. It's just he's a volume monster. And I think you- he's way more efficient than Kamara is at this point. Historically, he has been way more efficient. Yeah. You're, you're just worried that the Saints are going to pivot their offense to something else because it's not working. Yes. I I don't think that... I wouldn't give the Saints what, that much What would credit. they pivot to? That's what I'm saying. It's not, it, I don't think they have, like, a quarterback that can, like, carry this team. Like, they almost need Alvin Kamara to carry... If Alvin Kamara's touch count started to say... Uh, Jamal Williams comes back, right? And instead of getting 18 carries, Jamal, uh, Kamara gets 12 carries. And then he has normal games of, like, three to four targets. 12 carries and three... Is that normal for him? I feel like that's not normal I, for him I agree. I'm thinking, like, five plus. He had one game with three, I think one with seven, and one with 13. Yeah, I mean, the 13's obviously, I feel like, kind of... Yeah, that's outlier. a little much. That's not really... Yeah, and then, I don't know, like... I. I also look at last season. Here are his like target totals of the last ten games of last year, right? Starting I, from I think this is eighteen backwards. Offense. Two, one, four, two, three, seven, five, four, four. So I listen, I, I think when everything kind of like condenses, when it gets back to normal Alvin Kamara, I think we're probably gonna be looking at like twelve to thirteen carries and three to four targets, which is like fine for probably maybe like a high end RB two, but I just don't think they're gonna sustain I don't think he's gonna sustain what he's doing right now. Like there's just he's not Derrick Henry. Like, they're feeding him as if he's Derrick Henry, and that stuff doesn't play out for most players, I don't think. I think, I, I think three to four is just a low ball, and that one to two target difference is could be the difference maker. Yes. I mean, he's averaging, like, fucking three yards a catch. We've also, like, we, me and you were watching last week, and it's like, Derrick Carr was just, like, it was like last minute he'd get the ball to come on. Like, there's nothing he could do. And That's what I mean. I mean, they're, they're not, like, they're not – Writing up like creative. No, it's not for game plan for him. It's more so like I mean. emergency. Yeah, the dump off. So it's like five for fucking twenty two through the air. It's like nice if you're in PPR, but it doesn't really do much for me. If you're not making explosive plays, I I mean I would just assume that Derek Carr is not going to change the style of quarterback he's been for his entire career. Dennis Allen isn't all of a sudden going to be able to scheme up something better than than he's been cooking. So I, I think go buy Alvin like Kamara in the dynasty league. Try to trade him to me and see what I do. I mean, dynasty is different. Dynasty's See what I do with it. We talked way too much about Alvin Kamara. But, yeah, Dynasty's I'm different. I'm waiting for you to make a point, Jama. You're playing him in fantasy. You're not sitting. Up. He's only had one game below 14 points. Want to make a bet? All right, let's get into some rankings. Roast away. Let's talk fantasy. I didn't even rank Jamal Williams. I mean, no one's going to really I, have the confidence yeah. to start Kendrick Jamal playing? Williams right off the bat. Uh, Trevor Lawrence at QB 14. Do you think it's still fair to keep him outside that QB 1 range? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely in this matchup. 
Yeah. He's uh, he honestly feels a little high, but there's just so many teams on bye this week. This is a huge bye week. Six teams on bye. Yeah. I was gonna say even at QB fourteen, like I T Law feels like a, a fade a fade for me this week. Yeah. But I'm just not sure who's behind him on the rankings list. Does that make sense? Yeah. Derek Carr is three hundred fifty three yards last week. Led the NFL. So you're playing number him this week? One, number one. You, you playing? I would be okay with playing him. Yeah. Wouldn't trade him to me in dynasty and see no what t- I <laughs> see what I no do. Tyson with it. Campbell. See what I fucking do with it. All right, hold on. Behind T Law, I got Geno Smith, Josh Dobbs, Kirk Cousins. Wait, wait, hold on. go. We need matchups, with matchups and shit too. Yeah. yeah. Behind Trevor Lawrence, I got Geno versus the Cardinals. That might be the biggest. That's a slam. One. I would easily take Geno. Yeah, over. Gino really. Over. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't been that great. Yeah, but G- Geno T Law hasn't been good for fantasy at all either. Plus that game but is probably. Just, but it's T Law. He's just a good player. That game. That game's gonna be high flying. I think Seattle, Arizona. Really? Yeah. I mean. You don't have the total pulled up, but like it's definitely over forty. Unlike this game, so you would also take Josh Jobs versus Geno. Yeah, I mean Josh Jobs might just be bad. Josh Jobs over Geno? No, 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 no. G- Josh, Josh Jobs over T Law. Over T Law versus uh, Geno versus Seattle. Um, I'd strongly consider it. I don't like this matchup at all for T Law. I don't either. Okay, yeah. And what about Kirk versus the Niners? That might be that's a stay a, away. That's a stay away, especially without <laughs> Justin Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Who well, else? Keep going. Couple more. Uh, you're gonna hate me for this one. I got Purdy behind him against Minnesota. <sighs> yeah, yo, Purdy can cook even with no. That feels out of control. Even if there's no McCaffrey and Debo, which I don't. Expect. That's 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 why he's so low. He will go up if they're both playing. I think Debo might actually play. I heard okay. today somewhere. But even if both of them don't, same. Play. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be nervous about so it. So if at they're all. both out, you would take Purdy over T Law. Yeah. No way. Against Minnesota. Yeah. Hell yeah. I would do it. No, you. Uh, yes, me. All right. I don't know the running backs. <laughs> <laughs> he's ten all the way up at RB6. I would feels like he thoughts. deserves a spot. You know, I think that it feels a little high. Maybe I could be wrong not looking at the other running backs surrounding him. But, again, low-scoring game. He should be getting a lot of volume, though. But it's a tough defense. The, the Saints defense is extremely tough. They're really tough against the run. Second which... fewest least points. Running <laughs> nice. Back. What about the most? Who gives up the most? Who doesn't give up the most? Who gives up the fewest most? <laughs> Enough, least. you're confusing me. <laughs> but he leads the league in rushing attempts. And really? He's eighth in fantasy points per game. He leads the NFL in rushing attempts? Yeah, crazy. Damn. Yeah, you told me that off camera, and I was like, weren't the Jags trying to like get another running That's back to yeah. supplement him? Yeah, Tank, it seems like Tank kind of stinks. ETN's getting every bit of work there that he can... Uh, I, th- this one is one that kind of like... This matchup, again, I don't love it for ETN. Uh, just because they'll probably stop him on the ground, and he hasn't really, he hasn't really like exploded through the area. I don't think, right? I, I had those was? thoughts, and I'm like, are they gonna force feed him? Because I don't know how limited Trevor is. Yeah, but you could have the assumption if he plays, he's fine. Also, it doesn't know. matter if we're talking about season long. No one's sitting ETN yeah, to begin exactly. with. Uh, Facts. Everyone is sitting Kamara. Mister inefficient, due for regression workload. Alvin you Kamara. got him all the way up at eight. Yeah. Damn. He's him. I don't even disagree with that, realistically. Like, for one week, fine with it. But I'm just saying, I just don't think what he's doing is going to be sustainable for the entire year. If you have Kamar and you're looking to sell, Mm -hmm. you wait one more week? Mm -hmm. If you have a trade offer for fair fair value right now, you should hold now, right? I'd be okay. I would be okay taking it now, depending on what the. I mean, you guys like him a lot. There are definitely people in your league. If you own Kamara, there's definitely people that are like, he's real. Yeah. So if if I found an offer where I feel like it's, it's fair value, yeah, I'd be okay moving him now. At the wide receivers, I got Kirk over Ridley. Thoughts? I'm 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 there with you. I think I'm it just has to happen. He's got more targets. He's above him in fantasy. Like I feel like Ridley at this point is just like their big play guy. Yeah, like he's almost what Zay Jones was last year. One of and he's Zay only Jones. there because Zay Jones is out. Yeah. What? How many? How many weeks has Christian Kirk outscored Ridley? Do you have that? Mm, exactly. I feel like okay. I, so I think Ridley's they s- only had like two big games. I'm right. Assuming and I, that. Kirk has outscored him all the other games. It was week one, Ridley went off, Kirk mm-hmm. did nothing. But I almost, I feel like even the week maybe Ridley had a big game, Kirk also might have had a big game. Yeah, it was versus Buffalo. The thing so is, when it, Ridley's it. bad games have been, like, bad. concerningly bad. Yeah, and Kirk's always been steady. Yeah. I'm fine with these rankings, yeah. That's that's probably exactly where I would put them. Yeah, if I only if I could only start one, I'm definitely starting Kirk over Ridley. Kirk. Ridley did outscore him in that Buffalo game, but since week two, Kirk's not had a game below 11. Like yeah. That's a pretty st- nice floor in yeah. half PPR. He'll take that all day. Yeah, Kirk's been great. Still Ridley's pretty, boomer bust. Still pretty high on Olave. Like, 
like have them well into that wide receiver one range. Yeah, no reason not to. Alave, Thomas, Jahe. Like Jacksonville has actually been not great against like uh, stopping the pass. They have some good pass rush, obviously, and a good run D, but they're. I mean, they're not like an elite defense by any means. And yeah, I mean, the Colts were able to get some explosive plays last yeah. week against them. That's definitely so their weakness time, is, is letting know. up explosive plays. I think, which yeah. is why I like Shahid this week. You have Ingram, who's just been consistent. Taysom Hill. Let's talk about that. He's it's so got motherfucker weird. got like 10 targets last week. Yeah, and they were like legitimate tight end routes. No, 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 it wasn't like, like a gimmick. I kind of feel like we're going to see that. They were again. unironically using Taysom Hill. I kind of feel like, uh, yeah, because I think as, if Jawan Johnson's out, they just feel like they found something again. Right. They refound something. I mean, if you, if that's true, he deserves to be higher than even tight end 17. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to see it one more time. Maybe I'll be late to the party, but I'm willing to be late. Then just assume that's what's his new role. The reason I like to put I like to put a little bit of extra like juice on Taysom Hill's rankings because if you think he's going to be a good tight end, he's also probably getting like three carries and a pass attempt. Yeah, that like no other tight end is getting. That's why I think Taysom is on the borderline of tight end one. Like Travis Kelsey is locked but, in to be the uh, before, first ranked tight end every week, but like. Taysom Hill could fuck around and be the tight end one. Mm-hmm. But the last part you said where he could get three carries, one pass attempt, that's what he used to rely on. Like, I'm just assuming that's all he's going to get again. Is he really going to get? I'm not. I'm looking work? at last week, and I'm like, okay, they probably feel like they found something using Taysom Hill as their tight end without without Johnson. That's why I'm like, Taysom Hill, I feel like, could be almost their every down tight end this week. So it's almost like if you're getting an every down tight end who like, is mid as shit, it sucks, but also gets – three carries, maybe some red zone work yeah, and a yeah. passing attempt. Yeah. It just adds that little boost that that kind of like breaks every tiebreaker for me. When you're looking at dudes who, you know, th- that middle of the pack tight end group, whether it's like Pat Fryermuth or one of the Buffalo tight ends or something, like I'm, I'm taking Taysom Hill over those guys. Yeah. yeah like it, 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 at this point, it does feel like if like, like you said, Pat Fryermuth, if the Steelers randomly came out and were like, Pat Fryermuth should be seeing more carries and pass attempts this week. <laughs> You'd be like, well, got to like put him up the ranks, I guess, because he's going to get these opportunities. But T- Taysom Hill might be might be that guy. Like Matt Canada in his bag. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let Canada cook. All right. Yeah. Evan Ingram also just getting an absurd amount of work. He's just been really solid. Yeah. He gets hella targets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have him in, I think, our Dynasty League, which is tight end premium. It's so nice. I'm like, all right, he's going to give me 12 to 14 points every week for no reason. Yeah, this – and I, I think he's got a little bit of touchdown upside that do some positive regressions coming. Love that so much. How many touchdowns does he have this year? Zero touchdowns. Zero. And I think is his ceiling all? is like four at this point. How many? How many? Yeah. The, the problem is like T Law's not really throwing a ton. That's true. You know, ET, ETN's shit. getting a lot of them in. T Law's running the ball a little bit. So it's like I don't know the touchdown upside for most of these guys on the team just in general. Yeah. Feels like they do all have individual upside except for Evan Ingram right now. Yeah. Really. Well, that's why Kirk's like. I'm in love with because he doesn't need the touchdown upside. Ridley feels like he'd be, he, he'd be scoring though. Yeah, Kirk, I right? Mean, he's got two on the year. Really? Yeah. I feel like they've come in maybe the last two games. For some reason, in my mind, he's, he's scoring. <laughs> no, that I don't. I don't even know what's happening. I would agree with Taysom if you're right. If you're right, he definitely deserves to be higher. But why? Why isn't how, he? It's right, not I how guess. that works. Like, he, last week he was because we had eight routes. targets. If you're right about Trevor Lawrence being the QB 14, then you're right. If you're right about the Okay, yeah, fine. If you're right about the attention Taysom's going to get, you're right that he deserves to be higher towards the tight end one range. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get eight targets, but... You're right. I think, <laughs> I think, he, I think he's going to be, like, they're going to use him as an actual tight end for the first time in forever. I also think Rashid Jahi is startable, so get his ass in your lineups. Really? Would you start him over MT? Um, not in full PPR, but I would, I would think about it in other scoring settings. I was telling Tony, MT is so weird. Like, we're so weird this year. We're used to him being that guy... Or not playing at all. Now he's like steadily healthy, but he's just kind of mid. I mean, he's not good anymore. Yeah. That's what but it's happens. weird. We're either used to peak MT or. But as I mean, like, that's what happens with old players. They just keep fucking up their ankles and feet and shit. <laughs> and it's just, they're not the same. You know? Odell, so good. He's so I bad. I also just think this offense isn't good. They were more efficient last year with Andy Dalton. Their points per game was better with Winston and Dalton than it is this year with Derek Carr. Someone got to let Jameis rip, dude. Dude, he kind of should be playing at this point. Like, what do you, what do you? If he was in Atlanta, we'd be so good. Oh, uh, I mean, you're saying go, playing go, in New Orleans? Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, what, what are you gonna lose from switching out Derek Carr? A lot of money. I mean, I think that's the sure, reason they signed like, him. Like, they had Jameis on the roster. They yeah, want but Derek. I, you got to expect when you sign Derek Carr. <laughs> Look you at them fucking expired better. crab legs, and they're like, nah. I just, I'm so down on Derek Carr. You hate Derek. I Carr. I hate Derek Carr. Speaking of Derek Carr, you think you can get point five yards? I'm taking the lower. <laughs> All right. Well, we're getting into our underdog squares, our favorite squares of the game. My favorite, 
And Tony's favorite is the .5 Derek Carr yardage. I like higher. He likes lower. JMO, break the tie. Just going to get it. <laughs> He's going to push. He's going to push on point .5. <laughs> All right, well, that's the free square. Obviously, you can go sign up on Underdog Fantasy. Link down below. Use promo code BDG. It'll hit you with that double deposit match. My square is Rashid Shahid. if you can't tell. I, I like him in this game. At 37 and a half, rushing plus receiving yards. I'll take the receiving yards if that's the only thing still available to you. I'm just looking at Jacksonville. And again, I think their weakness is letting up big plays. They're going to be without Tyson Campbell. Uh, they're allowing the ninth highest yards per attempt to opponents. They've allowed huge plays, 30-plus yard plays in the air to Sky Moore, Justin Watson, Tank Dell, Johnny Smith, Michael Pittman, Kyle Granson, Jonathan Taylor. A lot of guys getting a lot of yards against them. Uh, Rashid Chahid is playing a lot, too, coming off a season-high 83% of the snaps last week, second in the NFL in terms of 40-plus yard catches behind only Tyreek Hill. His A dot of 18.4 is the highest in the NFL among qualified wide receivers. They're going to take a deep shot to him. They're going to take one or two, maybe six, and uh, he'll connect on one. I just feel like it's a low number, plus he gets some carries, won a game. I think he'll he'll get some juice going. I like Shahid. I like Shahid. Good player. Good ball player. All right, sticking with the Saints wide receiver room, I'm taking... The top dog, Chris Olave, took over 61 and a half receiving yards. He's done this in four out of six games. And the two he missed, Derek Carr wasn't feeling himself. He had that shoulder injury. They said it would take about two weeks, two to three weeks for him to get fully healthy. And during that two to three week span, in which he wasn't healthy, what do you know? Chris Olave's production dipped. That is normal. That was expected. Now that Carr is back on track, I see no reason this receiving room can't get to their full potential. And Olave... On the season, is averaging 70 yards per game. So no matter which way you look at it, he's been there. He's done that. He's doing that. And as you mentioned before, a little cherry on top. No Tyson Campbell, who I would say is the Jaguars' best corner. Give it to me. Give it to me. We love Derek Carr. We're a Derek Carr podcast. If we didn't already have the Derek Carr free square, I'd be taking all <laughs> of his lowers. But I'm not. I'm going to go with a lower of Calvin Ridley. Now, I need mm. some help here. I need to decide between his receptions, which is at four and a half, or his receiving yards, which is at 53 and a half. Yeah, it, we're looking at the monitor here. I just threw a bunch of Derek Carr slander up there just in case you wanted to read it before taking all of his wide receivers, but it's okay. We'll get into it in our game predictions. But right now we're talking Calvin Ridley, okay? In his last three games, he had the blow up against Buffalo where he had seven catches, 122 yards, but then stunk against Indy and stunk against Atlanta. So I'm just not feeling Calvin Ridley in this low-scoring game. We don't even know if Trevor Lawrence is actually going to be out there. Even if he is out there, he's going to be limited. So Calvin Ridley being the highest-ranked guy on underdog as a pass-catching weapon for Jacksonville, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just fading that. I'm fading that. So saying all this, I kind of – what are we feeling? Reception what was the yards, yards again? Yards was 53 and a half. Low number. He's it is a low play. number, but it's going to be a slow-paced game. Like, I, I just don't think – He's probably only hit that in, like, two games this year. He has. He's hit these numbers only twice, and it's his two blow-up games. You know what? I'm going to go... Double down. Make a decision. Be a man. I'm going to go... Take a Derek Carr square. He's going to score a touchdown. No, no, no. I'm going to go receptions. I'm going to go receptions. Final answer, four and a half receptions, taking the lower. Okay. Okay. No Zay Jones. No Zay Jones, but, you know, Evan Ingram gets a whole bunch of work. Christian Kirk's actually the one. And Calvin Ridley feels like the deep threat, which is the more volatile, like harder to complete. So lower four and a half. Fade, fade really this game all around. Hi, Dan. This is my favorite part when we get into the game predictions and how fucking bad Derek Carr has been this year. What is this? Just this is chicken scratch. Yeah, it is. It's a bunch of chicken scratch. Do I start? Are we going to game predictions? You are Derek Carr's number one hater. Problem is, I grew up in the Bay Area. We've had to listen to all this Derek Carr hype and how he's the savior of the franchise for years. And he's not. He's a fraud. He's such a fraud. All right. If he wins this game, is he back? No. Only. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just not. I mean, I don't even know if Trevor Lawrence is playing. He might be playing against C.J. Beathard. If Trevor Lawrence doesn't play, Derek Carr wins. Is he back? <laughs> Some are saying. <laughs> oh, this is such a tough game to pick. It's not. This is such. This is easy. It's just straightforward. Uh, I just feel the Jags choke in this one. I do too a little bit, but I'm willing to go down that route. I'll go, I'll take Jacksonville plus one and a half. Mm -hmm. I'll take the money line. Mm -hmm. Same. Of the Saints. We're all, we're all Saints Jackson. money line, Jags plus one and a half. <laughs> Split the difference. Yes. Uh, yeah, let, let, let's roll Jags plus one and a half, which makes me feel like for sure it's going to be the Saints. Take an over-under. Under. That's so ballsy to take it. No, it's not. To take an under in the in the 30s? I don't think it is, though. What's, give me a score prediction, Jim. 37-30. <laughs> no. Before the show, when you were like, Vegas is projecting this to be 
about a 20 to 19 point game based on the spread in total. Like that to me sounds high. 20 points for either of these teams seems like it's going to be a lot. I see this game being more 17, 13, even like 13, 10. That's wild. Is it though? Like Saints games this entire year have been low scoring outside of the fact that like they beat the shit out of the Patriots and scored 30. I'm going points. over. You're going over. I'm going over. No fucking By chance. a lot. Sir. By so many. Sir. Alt line over. No. It's like a 27 20. Over. <laughs> he wanted to say 37. He wants to launch so it up bad. to 47. Yeah. Have you ever bet an under before? Player props, yeah, but. Do you want to actually deep dive into the game or are we just all taking Jags and under? I could tell you want to. Yeah. A little bit. I could okay. tell you want to rip about I don't, I don't want to bullshit rip. where Derek Carr is going to make you look like an idiot. No, no chance. I'm just saying. Leading the league in passing yards last week. Impressive. So you would take also, whatever his red line zone. is under? 235 or whatever it's at? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell you what. He may go over half a yard, but he ain't going over 234 or whatever it is. I don't know about that. Saints O-line, so banged up. Jack's got a good pass rush. I think he's just, that's just, Derek Carr's so immune to that. Like, when has he ever had a good O-line? That's fair, but when has he ever been good? Always. No, that's the problem never that I have bad. with Derek Hart. Everybody's like, he's always been good. He's never been good. He was good in 2015 when he first came in the league. Broke his shit. Never been the same. About to get heated. Answer for your sins. Wednesday. He's yelling at you. You can't even look at him in his eye. You can't even look at me in my stash. Yeah. Stash to stash right now. Go stash to stash. What does that even mean? You know really close to each <laughs> you other. You know what it means. <laughs> Make the stashes touch. We'll touch. God, are they going to win? Who? The Jags. <laughs> I have no confidence that Jacksonville is going to win. No, but I have to pick them. This feels like a sucker pick. F- I'm changing. Saints minus one and a half. You really changing? Yeah. You better be right. What do you mean? Derek Carr better suck. Dude. The problem is if all three of us bet the same line, the other side wins. But once I transfer over, then you guys win. So you're doing this for us? Yeah, for JMO because he's never won a bet before. That's fair. Can't win trivia. Can't win purple trivias. Can't win bets. All right. Take us away. All right. Take us away. That's our Thursday night preview. Jags plus one and a half over 27 20. Make sure to give us some love. Peace. All right. Rate the stashes. Your turn. Let me tell you about Derek Carr, huh? <laughs> I can't wait for Derek Carr to absolutely tear that shit up tomorrow night. Oh, Tony's clubbing. <laughs> Derek Carr lighting up the scoreboard. We're going to be in shambles. Jam, come to the club with us. Dude, come on. Then you'll go clubbing. You're going to get bottle service. Or, no, or dude, the no Jags shot. make it. Dude, I can't believe how fucking expensive that shit is. Yeah. I got swindled. You got it? I thought it was just a bottle of Tito's. No, dude. chill. You did not get it. Dude, I thought it was just No, no, no. Like, hold on. I thought it was just a bottle. Like, I thought you go to a liquor store, pick up a bottle, and they, like, tip them on it. Oh, my God. No, okay, I didn't get that shit. Okay, I knew you didn't. Eh, you thought I did. No, nah, you, you would have made, made a much bigger deal. You would have came in like, dude, I didn't know how fucking much the bottles were at a club. I just didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to know I was chill like that. You're not, though. That's how I knew you didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> you're gonna get it, it tomorrow. You're gonna get it. Yeah. You're gonna need to drown yourself after Derek Carr goes for mm-hmm. Yonkers bonkers.